Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now how can it be special, I hear you ask, when the spinny thing is out of commission? And I've got to hold it here like it is the Dark Ages. Well, we're just going to have to imagine that I am a solar-powered turntable and this little goblin is turning slowly of his own accord. This fella here, he is from the Goblin Regiment set from Mantic, and they very kindly sent me along a box of them to have a play with. I did paint one of these already, and the video didn't come out right at all. So I've soldiered on and gone ahead and done another, and as soon as I get him in focus, there he is. Now, it's worth pointing out that if you are going to batch paint these miniatures, then it's probably worth watching the video I did on the Ratkin as well. I'm using Citadel Paints today, where I used Army Painter Paints for the Ratkin, and it's really a case of just picking what you can get your hands on, what you like to use. It's all up to you. We are painting toy soldiers after all. There's not a lot of rules on how a goblin ought to look. So these kits are actually really nice. I'll talk a little bit about them as I'm painting. All of the paints for this will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. The kits themselves have a bunch of parts available. There are 20 bodies in the box, the Goblin Regiment, and each of them repeats twice across two sprues, so you'll end up with four that are the same each time. Uh, to be quite honest though, because of the range of arms and heads you're going to get in there too, you're never going to notice. It's not going to double up until you've got three or four <laughs> regiments of these guys in your army. The proportions on them are a little more similar to, if you recall the old uh, Warhammer Fantasy Orcs and Goblins, these guys are a little bit chunkier, they aren't tiny weedy grots, they are nasty flighty goblins, and I really like that. So I've chosen this fella with the... Now some of you, I suspect, have never had a coal bucket sitting next to a fireplace in your house. So this one, <laughs> that's what it looks like to me, uh, and that's what I've chosen for his helmet, because I think it's just brilliant. And I've given him a primer of Zandri Dust. None of the miniature is actually going to be Zandri Dust when we're finished, but this is the most convenient sort of middle ground for the primer. You could use Vallejo Leather Brown or anything of the sort. It doesn't really matter. We're going to get straight on to starting from the bottom layer, which is going to be his skin, and I am using Hobgot Hide for this. Now, this is one of the newer Citadel base colors, and it's a funny one because it looks really yellow, in the pot, but when you apply it, uh, it's a yellowish color, sure, but it's got a tiny wee touch of green to it, and when we shade it, that's going to become much stronger. Uh, I really like the color. I didn't think I would, to be perfectly honest, but it's such an unusual pucy browny green. Yeah, it's a neat one, but we're going to start with the skin, because if we end up hitting armor or what have you, it is not going to matter. Wait, those are trousers. Never mind, I'm not going to paint his trousers skin color. Uh, but his arms and his face. We'll hit those now with a layer of this. After two coats, you're going to have a nice, solid, sickly green. And the more I look at it, the more I actually really like this color. Now, speaking of having gotten his trousers the wrong color, because they are one of the lower points on the miniature, we're going to move on to those now. For this, I'm going to use Steel Legion Drab. Now, there is 100% not a correct answer to what color are a goblin's trousers. You know, you can, of course, paint these however you would like when you come to paint your own. I'm just picking colors I think are going to work together. You'll see as well, once I sort of got the paint in my hands, I decided I was going to paint his shirt in the same brown. Obviously, you can paint it any color. I would suggest a gray or something, like Mechanicus Standard Gray is always a pretty good color as a third option for most color schemes, because gray, it goes with near enough anything. This little tabard doubler, this little scrap of cloth there though, if you've got an army color you want to use to tie everything together, then this is a good spot for a color, funnily enough. <laughs> and I'm using Evil Sun Scarlet because I want quite a light red in there. When we shade it, it's going to look a lot darker, so if I start from a nice bright red, once it's darkened down, it's not going to look quite so dull. Now, earlier I said I wasn't going to leave any of the Zandri dust showing, but I've changed my mind. What I'm going to leave that on is the grip on his club here. You could paint this a leather color, for example. That would also work fairly well. 
But what I am going to do is use a little bit of Rackarth flesh to paint in the hand wraps. Now I'm going to paint some leather straps on these later, but because the, uh, what do you call it, that linen stuff that he's wearing is underneath, if we paint that first, we can paint the leather over the top without having to worry about hitting what we've already done. Now that won't take much to do, and as well, if you can reach, just try jamming some of it up onto the other hand. It's not going to matter too much. Now ordinarily when it comes to doing metallic areas, I like to leave them nearer to last. So I'll paint all of the clothing and leather and what have you, and then paint the metallic stuff. But in this case, I think it's going to be easier to lay down the metallic stuff and then paint the leather straps and what have you around those instead. So I've got here Balthazar Gold, because I want a grubby sort of copper for some of the armor plates. Uh, the copper coal bucket that this... <laughs> oh, I feel like such an old bloke, eh? Oh, I remember when, when I had a copper coal bucket. Anyway, I'm going to paint this in copper first. And he's got this cool little belt, which looks like it would also be uh, that bronzy color. Finally, what I'm going to do is the inside of his shield. It looks like he's nicked it from a dwarf or something similar. So I am going to paint some of that in with this bronze. And what we're going to paint is the silver metallic details. So I have lead belcher here and a medium, what is this, a regiment brush from the army painter. Uh, let's pick some of these panels and paint them in with lead belcher. It's up to you, as always, what is going to look right. Um, I kind of think that most of this dude's armor looks fairly basic metallic, so I'm just going to slap this on most of it, including his little shoulder pad here. There is nothing to say. You couldn't paint these as though they've been painted and lacquered with a certain color, but that is up to you. And while I'm doing this, I'm not going to forget I've been worried about this the whole time. The nails that are driven through his club, let's paint those too. Now, as well as the shield, I've also hit a couple of the patches on his helmet. Because <laughs> uh, who wants a hole in their bucket, right? So I've got now XV88. And this is a this is a really neat color, because it's not yellow, it's not brown, but it takes on the characteristics of a shade really well. So it will look quite yellow going on. But of course, we're going to Agrax Earthshade this later, spoiler warning. And it will look much more reasonable. Now at this stage, we're really down to the last couple of colors. So for the leather details, I've chosen Mournfang Brown. This one has got a nice, slightly reddish tone to it, and it covers beautifully. So it's a good choice for any middling sort of leather, especially knowing that we are going to shade it. Now take a second just to make sure that you've got all of the straps and stuff that he's wearing. There are quite a few little bits hidden away. And I do suggest, like, on his left arm here, tucked away behind his shield. If you're struggling to reach those areas with a brush, don't worry about painting them. Just, we'll shade it a little more heavily and it will be fine. I have now Screaming Skull, and this is going to be the last of our base colors. And this time with a nice small brush, <laughs> I'm going to apply a little of this to his teeth. Now at this stage is where you want to go back and do any tidy up if you need to. So if you've splodged on his skin or you need to tidy up the, uh, the weapon or whatever, do it last because you will save a lot of time versus individually blip 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 and tidying as you go on each miniature. Anyhow, I've given my Agrax Earthshade here a really good shake. And let's go ahead. We're going to bucket this on the whole miniature. So, big old brush, and just chuck it on. Don't be afraid of it. We want to work it into the recesses, so make sure up around his neck and what have you, you are jamming it in there. And yeah, this one you can have a bit of fun with. You, you can go overboard, let's say, but I would say it's very difficult to. So don't be afraid to really throw this on. Once we've got this applied all over the miniature, we're going to leave them to dry somewhere warm for about half an hour. And after that half hour, you're going to have something that looks like this rather happy looking chappy. Now what I'm going to do is to actually dry brush a couple of highlights, and we're going to start by doing that for the metal. Reason being, because there is so much metal on him, uh, while I'm dry brushing, if I make any mistakes, we can, we can fix those up with our next highlights. So let's crack out the old Necron compound here, and one of my little soft makeup brushes. 
I'm going to go ahead and just dry brush along you know, wherever I fancy really to get an idea of what I'm going to leave behind. And then we'll start applying this first of all over the shield. It's nice and prominent. You'll see we catch the edges. Yeah, and even on that bronze, I think that looks kind of cool. So when it comes to his face, because he's got these little hangy downy bits quite close to his cheeks, we'll just start and flick up and away so that we're not as likely to hit his skin. Now, after a couple of passes, you'll have this cool dinged up. I really like it. I love the, how this metallic turns out, especially the pot on his head. Now we're going to go ahead and highlight his skin. And for this, I'm actually going to turn to a Vallejo color. Reason being, Hopgrot Hide doesn't really have a... Uh, most Citadel colors have a progression. So you'll go from McCrag Blue to Calgar Blue and so forth. Hopgrot Hide doesn't really have its own highlight color yet. But Green Ochre from Vallejo is a perfect highlight. If you do want to stick to your Citadel though, you can just pop a couple of drops of uh, Screaming Skull, not Skulls and Bone, goodness me, Screaming Skull into your Hobgrot Hide and you'll be fine. But let's just do a couple of bumps, warts, cheekbones. Now, particularly from this angle, I think you see what a difference it makes. Uh, the green brown is just, uh, green ochre, goodness, I'm sorry. The green ochre is just the right stuff. If you do want to paint in his eyes, you can go back to your Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, because this is such a tiny detail, though, I am going to do this off camera, because otherwise I'm going to I'm going to foul it up. And what do you know, I went and fouled it up anyway. But not to worry, all I've done is splash like his eyelid. So I can go back to a little of my Hobgrot hide, and I will tidy that up. Once again, yeah, doing that off camera. <laughs> and while I can't show you that directly, at least you can see, you know, nothing is ever so badly done that it's beyond saving. Now, in order to get just a little bit of contrast onto his trousers, I have some Bane Blade Brown, and I'm going to use that to highlight the Steel Legion Drab from earlier. Now, you don't want to go overboard with this because Bane Blade Brown is quite a quite a light one. But if you're careful, you can highlight his trousers and they'll look a little more interesting. If you do make any mistakes, you can either add in a wee bit of uh, that Grex Earthshade again, if you have to. Or you can even go back to your Steel Legion Drab and tidy up, same as I did with the eye. Now, there's not very much of that on his trousers, in fact, but I think it adds just a little. Now from here, I did mention using Scrag Brown to highlight his leather, but I just don't think you're going to need to. When you're painting goblins, you are doing these guys in regiments of 20, and you're probably going to want quite a few of them on the table. So while it is an option, I'm not going to. You are not going to notice it across an army. The extra work, eh, it's up to you. What I am going to do, though, is pop them outside. I'm going to hit him with a quick spray varnish from Vallejo, and I'll pop a base on him. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And then at last, you'll have something that looks like this. And I'm pretty happy with that. Particularly across a whole army, he's going to look just fine. Now, I quite like using a matte varnish, and the Vallejo one in particular on these, um, you know, these miniatures with a lot of metal on them. Because while it does dull it down, it takes some of the shine off. It doesn't uh, dull down and matte the color very much, so you don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to look right once the varnish is on. Now, another one that I do like in that respect is the Instar varnish. So if you're in the UK, uh, they're really easy to get a hold of, and they do have international stockists, but check out their website for where those are at the moment. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Ellen Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support really makes a difference, and I'm having fun just rah, 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 attacking with, <laughs> with this club there. Uh, any questions or anything, feel free. Do drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. And my Instagram. Gosh, I always, always manage to forget that one. Anyhow, thank you very much for your time, one and all. And you all enjoy the rest of your day.